today's episode of Digestible Defences, we're going to be looking together at a really important question. How could a good God create a world filled with so much suffering? And this is potentially one of the most important questions we're going to look at together, because this is a question that all of us are going to face at some point in our lives. What has become known as the problem of evil is a problem that every single one of us will experience at some point. Every one of us will experience what it is like to feel the pain of maybe relational breakdown or chronic illness or perhaps loss. And as we stare down the barrel of these painful experiences, it won't be long before we notice some difficult questions lurking at the backs of our minds. God is all powerful, right? And so surely he could do something about it if he wanted to. And he's all good as well, isn't he? So surely he would want to. And as well as that, he's meant to be all knowing, isn't he? So this hasn't taken him by surprise. This is what lies at the heart of the problem of evil. God, so the argument goes, if he is worth worshipping at all, ought to do something about suffering. And he hasn't. And that means that either the God of this argument is not worth worshipping, or that he's not there. To put it another way, God and suffering should not be able to coexist. And it certainly doesn't take a genius to realise that suffering does exist. And it shouldn't take us by surprise then that some people have tried to explain away the problem of evil by trying to explain away God. One example of these people is Richard Dawkins, the famous atheist, who wrote a book called The River Out of Eden. Listen to his own words as he tries to explain suffering without God. Nature is not cruel, only pitilessly indifferent. This is one of the hardest lessons for humans to learn. We cannot admit that things might be neither good nor evil, neither cruel nor kind, but simply callous, indifferent to all suffering, lacking all purpose. Dawkins is right that this is a hard lesson for us to learn, but perhaps one of the reasons for this is because it flies in the face of human experience at every turn, and not just the painful experiences. If you look again at that quote, you'll notice that it isn't just evil and cruelty that has been rendered purposeless but goodness and kindness as well. The very things we might have leaned on in the past to find meaning have been snatched from underneath us in the same breath. And not only that, but removing God from the equation doesn't seem to do anything about the problem of suffering, apart from rob us of the right to call it what it so patently seems to be. Wrong. An intrusion. An enemy in what we feel like ought to be a meaningful, purposeful, and perhaps even joyful life. It turns out that subtracting God from the equation does not solve the problem of evil. It only leaves us with more problems than we started with. So where can we go from here? I hope that we can agree that wherever we turn for an explanation, it absolutely has to uphold the meaningfulness of the parts of our lives that are filled with joy and kindness and friendships. And at the same time as that, it absolutely must stand opposed to the indignity and horror and wrongness of suffering. In short, any explanation worth its salt has to line up with the world as you and I actually experience it. And that is why I find the Christian story so compelling. You see, when I open the Bible, I'm confronted with a God who refuses to be indifferent to suffering. The Christian God is a God who weeps at gravesides who calls to himself the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. The God we see in the Bible does not in fact merely acknowledge our pain, but he enters into it. The Bible describes him as a man of suffering and familiar with pain, one who bears our suffering, who takes it upon himself and ultimately one who refuses to let this be the final chapter of our story. Now, if this is true, and I think this is good news for the hurting. And if so, I think this is really worth looking into. But the question is, what do you think? We are the Gate Church. <laughs>